Hello, everyone. Welcome back to PSAT 5A. For the last couple of weeks that we have remaining in the quarter, we're going to take a look at linear regression. And so for PSAT 5A, this is set up kind of nicely for us where chapter 9 is the setup for chapter 10, really. And there's not a whole lot to do, just mostly understanding some of the notation and the terms that are associated with it. So chances are you've seen linear regression in the high school algebra course, um, but just not from the statistics perspective. So the goal here is the following. We're going to look at a relationship between two quantitative variables. If you recall in unit eight, we were comparing two qualitative variables or binomial ones where we converted them to proportions. Well, now if I have two different sets of numbers, I want to see, is there a relationship between them? So as you can read in this problem here, uh, we've got a pediatrician. She has a bunch of babies. And she's looking at their age measured in months and weight measured in pounds. So we have these two here. So the two quantitative variables will be age and weight. And the objective here is to predict weights. And now this is critical because this allows us to decide which variable is the explanatory, which one's the response. So in our class, the value that you are either predicting or trying to estimate, this is always the response variable. So since I'm predicting weight, that means my weight is Y and my age is X. And so we've got a random sample of five infants, ages one through five months, and their weights ranging from nine to 16 pounds. And so what I wanna do is I wanna use this data to try to make sense of what type of relationship, and that's what the correlation measures. So correlation, the symbol for our class, is just a lowercase r, and it has an equation that looks kind of messy, but we're gonna break it down. So in the denominator, you've got n minus one, you have s sub x, s sub y, which just represents the sample standard deviation of the respective data sets. And then we've got this cross product term in the numerator. And again, it looks messy, but we'll break it all down. And that's the summation, okay? So that's the equation I wanna eventually plug in. So how do I get this from raw data? Well, usually in PSAT 5A, specifically with Professor Swenson, she may give you raw data, but chances are you're going to have a summary of this. And the key values in the summary we need are these five numbers, x bar, y bar, the sums of squares for your x's, which you first saw back in chapter five the sums of the squares for the y, which is the exact same thing, but since we've got two variables, we're labeling one of them x and one of them y. And then we have this cross product term that's kind of new that we're using. But outside of regression for PSAT 5a, you're not gonna do anything with this other than just plug it into some of your formulas, okay? So I went ahead and calculate this already. But X bar and Y bar are just the averages of your data set. So you can calculate this yourself if you feel like it and find out this is three and this is 14. And then for these sums of squares, you can go back and look at chapter five, but it's just a bunch of plugging numbers in. So we don't need to waste our times with that. And I'll give you the results here. Feel free to check this. 10, 33 and a half for the y's, and then this cross product term is 15 and a half. And like I said, for 5A with Professor Swenson, she will usually provide these five summaries for you, or at least an easy way to figure them out. Okay, so now that that's set, so here this is given. My goal now is just to plug this into this equation for my correlation and then try to make sense of it. So N, as always, is our sample size. So we have five infants. This numerator term is the cross product that we have is 15 and a half. 
And then what we currently don't have are the sample standard deviations. So if you recall, I'm going to do this off to the side here, that the sample standard deviation for x is going to be the sums of the squares of your x's divided by n minus 1. Now, without the square root symbol, this is the sample variance. We want to use sample standard deviation. So we borrow that relationship where we take the square root. And so now what I can do is just plug in the numbers from this yellow box here. I get 10 over 5 minus 1. I take the square root of that, and this will give me 1.5811. And then very similarly, y is the same thing, but now I'm going to use the numbers related to my random variable weight. So 33 and a half, again, over 5 minus 1 radical, and that leaves me with 2.894. Okay, and these are the values I'll plug in to my correlation equation. I'll leave them the same color to highlight. This is our 1.5811 we just did. And then similarly to 894. Again, for the numerator, one common thing that happens is students will sometimes separate those uh, parentheses, x minus x bar, y minus y bar, but the idea is the summation is the entire block that I'm going to box over here. So usually this term you would just leave alone. She'll give it to you, and you can just plug it in as one number instead of separating it. So I've got all my numbers in place. I've got the sample standard deviations in green at the bottom, the n minus 1 sample size, and then this cross product term. And if I multiply and divide everything together, I get a correlation that is 8469. So what does that mean for us? Well, anytime you're dealing with correlation in this class, we're going to reference the type of linear relationship between the two variables. So for simple linear regression, which is what PSAT 5A covers, the simple part means we're not going to look at nonlinear relationships between variables. We'll keep things linear, which means the pattern follows a line, right? There are no curves, there are no breaks, so just some kind of basic linear pattern. And so the two descriptions you'll want to highlight for any correlation would be the direction, so clearly from this number here, it's positive, which means as your x gets bigger, your y gets bigger, and the data kind of shows that. It doesn't mean for every single data point, but that's this is the general trend. And then the other thing we want to mention is how strong is this relationship? And the scale goes anywhere from zero to one. The closer you are to one, the stronger it is, closer you are to zero, the weaker it is. And we see here, this is pretty close to one. So I'm going to characterize it as a strong linear relationship. So the idea here is if I show graphs and I show numbers to different people, they may interpret them slightly differently. But if we have one single number that represents a correlation, there's only one way to interpret this. And that's to conclude that I've got a strong and positive linear association between age and weight of infants. And that is the first step of calculating correlation.